Morning, lovely viewer. Well, today I was at Eastcroft Rose Nursery, a rose nursery that's local to me. And Peter, the owner, he, he showed me around. And as you will see, and as you will hear in this video, we discuss many of his, his roses. Roses from Cordes, Mayonde, Tantau, and also uh, many roses from the North American market that I haven't heard of. But the condition of these roses I thought was absolutely fantastic and considering we are approaching the end of August this is second flush and to see these roses producing this much flower at this time of year is testament to to Peter and his rose nursery but I'll let you hear us discuss this these roses as we as we walk around but you will see and hear Peter's favorites his best performing roses you'll hear us talk about um, the fragrant roses as well and of course at the end of the video I will choose my my favorite rose of the of the day well Justin just gave me the ultimate challenge and said you know what's your favorite rose and because it changes about three times a week but if we're talking about really really good plants there's not a yellow rose that's much better than this this is absolutely fabulous and it was Rose of the Year, International Rose of the Year in 2010. It's an American rose, but look how well that's travelled. You know, it's been bred in America, but look how it's performing here with us in cold, old England. Yeah. And look at the flowers and the... You know, when it, fades, it gets older, it fades a bit like they do, but look at that. Yeah. And it has a very, very nice yellow rose frame fragrance i'll just let just yeah. have a sniff of this because he's he's the sniff look. meister no, i'm not <laughs> yeah that is of all the roses i've smelt today that is is it's got to be amongst the the top end and i did say i did ask peter when we were walking around i did say what are these yellow roses over in the on the other side and he said absolutely fabulous i wasn't surprised and when i'm looking around in terms of ability to flower this is probably as a variety, I would suggest it's probably the, the most floracious here today. Probably is. I think so. It's a very generous rose. It keeps giving and it repeat flowers very well. It's good in a container. I've got I've got two and they're they're doing they are doing very well. Will these be for sale next year or this year? That's right. They'll they were budded in uh, twenty two and they'll be sold from bare root from this autumn which is autumn 23 and in pots next year in 24. see this these roses are just are just huge they are absolutely they're absolutely huge i mean look they're they're up to my well they're up to peter's knees and he's what six foot two yeah well probably yeah but i reckon my, my knee isn't six foot two but no but it's up to you it's up to you getting on for two and a half feet yeah for you know, for a new a new rose, brush brush strokes. Brush strokes. Oh there yeah, that's it when it's coming out. It's just, it's um, it's probably the best two color rose we grow. It's very very easy, very healthy, grows nice and upright, yeah. flowers freely, and amazing. You won't believe this, Justin. Bred by an amateur. Bred by an amateur. And no royalty to pay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I like this one. Yeah, yeah. But it's beautiful, stunning, isn't it? It is. It is beautiful. It's really popular that rose. I think this I think this rose will will flower well. It's got to, hasn't it? You know, it's just such a because you know, for uh, bearing in mind for everyone who doesn't know, this is just our commercial rose field. So they they have no water, they have no irrigation, they're just left out here to to have to fight it out for themselves. So you're seeing a rose you know, a good rose really performing well under quite difficult conditions because I expect a lot of your listeners and viewers, you know, they probably spend quite a lot of time looking after their roses. And we know with roses, the more you put in, the more you get out. A little bit of fiddling and feeding and watering really pays dividends. You've, you've just said something there. These roses, just run that past me again. You don't water them at all. They've, they've planted and they've had nothing. These have had nothing. They're just in the soil here. In the soil. What about feed? Uh, nothing. You are joking me. Nothing. But he's. But I'm very lucky. These have had no feed, no irrigation. 
but I'm very fortunate in that the person whose farm this is is a very good farmer and he does look after his soil. He's very, very hot on maintaining the minimum amounts of the micronutrients that you need. So right. we know, and he grows a lot of veg, and of course veg tends to have more fertilizer, so there will be residual fertilizer in this, but we haven't actually given them anything. Yeah. Well, that, um, that surprises me, I have to say. This is, well, I think this is another good rose. It's a lovely color. What would you say that is? Is it more apricot or it's not? I'd it's, say apricot. It's got it's got a yellow to it. Apricot, I think, is a is a good probably apricot. It's not orange, is it? Not really. No, orange. no. It's it's got like a an amber. Um, difficult to. It is a bit, isn't it? To put the the wording on it, but the it's other, a lovely flower. Because the other thing is different lights. If you came out here more towards dusk. Yeah. We've got a hugely bright sunny day today. See that one, there's more caramel. More color. caramel, yeah. yeah. So if you come out in a different light, it changes. What, what rose is this? This is one called Dolce Vita. Right, okay. And again, lovely and healthy, isn't it? Yeah. And that would work well in a pot. And you, it's, I think it almost produces too much flour. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Look at oh, this. I don't know about too much flour. <laughs> look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? it is, it is very healthy. Very healthy, and look at look at it. Look, look at, at that. all of that. Look at all of that. Dolce Vita. Dolce Vita. I'm not sure what that means. I should know. Vita must be life, but Dolce. I don't know. <laughs> it would be Dolce Vita. Dolce yeah. Vita. Dolce. And here we've got another another row of roses, and I've no doubt many of you will recognise this one. This is Double Delight, a hugely fragrant rose. I've just put my nose to it. I haven't actually seen one in the flesh before, only from photographs, but this is a this is a lovely flower. And Peter, he has a a whole row of them. But look at that. And like Double a delight. lot of these, like a lot of roses and a lot of these two colour roses, this is quite similar to nostalgia. Yeah, that's right. We go on called nostalgia. Yeah. But this will this is a more open habit, a little bit more lax in the way it grows, yeah. the nostalgia, but it has a lot more perfume. Yeah. But isn't it interesting how when they age, they lose that... They lose the white. The white, and they go, depending on the weather, more sun, more red. You know, it always works that way. So we're having a really hot spell at the minute. So as they're aging, they're losing their lovely creamy center, center. and just turning into that yeah. pink through into darker red. The opposite of, of what what normally happens yeah lovely 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 what is that rose? what is that rose on this side well this, on your side this is a very very good red it's, i think it's probably our best red tea rose it's called jubilee popper mayland ah oh, this and is a rose i've i've heard of it is gorgeous Look, look at the size of that. I know, look at the size of this one, Justin. I mean, that must be, what, six six inches across? <laughs> look at that. Look at that. And it's Let not me get the only beautiful, it's got an amazing fragrance. Powerful, powerful fragrance. And look how tall that is. Now, that is over three feet. Yeah. And it's still strong in the neck here. All upright. That is, that is a lovely red. It's a deep, it's a deep red as well. Jubilee Papa Mayon. Yeah, Jubilee Papa Mayon. Gorgeous. French rose, yeah. Bred by Mayon, is it? It is, yeah. There was an, a lot of people will know. We get a lot of people ring up asking for Papa Mayon. Yeah. But this was released, I don't know how many years ago now, quite recently. And this is supposed to be an improvement and it's dedicated to the founder of the, of the breeding family. So it's called. Jubilee Papa Mayo. It's supposed to be an improvement on the old Papa Mayo. Fantastic, fantastic. This one here is pure poetry. And as Peter has just pointed out, it's a rose that, that I have. And it is looking I know, absolutely. From us, didn't you? I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I did, yeah. Mine's not in flower at the moment, but these here. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, powerful fragrance this has a really strong fragrance yes yes and it's typical of these two roses you 
they often produce singles, but then on their second flowering, they'll often produce multiples. Yeah. Usually the first flowering, they're like this, you know, just one. Yeah. But I've noticed that the, the new, if it sends up a new powerful stem from the base, even for second flush, you get that's where you get the uh, the multiple sort of um, heads, you know, like yeah. a grandiflora type type thing, well, encouraging that that sort of those new strong stems that come up from mm. the base. But look, look at the size of that, and this is look, this is it's Justin's hand. It's bigger than your hand, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Absolutely divine. I think you can see why I uh, I chose pure poetry when I came here on a, a previous occasion. Look at this. Each one is just absolutely fantastic. And it's the size of these of these roses. Oh, I, I, Do you know what this one is? Oh yeah, that's, that's a climbing rose. That's called Sent from Heaven. Oh, this is Sent from Heaven, is it? And that is... That's a really good rose. Yeah. That's an English bread one. It's a Chris Walder variety. He's over in Shropshire. Okay. And it's, um, it has a beautiful fragrance and it's that nice sort of slightly milky orange. It's not a really bright orange. No. But it's a very good thing. Very, very good. Lovely, one. lovely rose. This is a lovely red here. Please, what's this red now, here? And, and you're going to ask whether that is, yes, now I like that. That is Red Parfume de Provence. And if you like a lighter red rose, that's what you say, crimson? Yes. Crimson yeah. red? With a lovely perfume. I'll just go and uh, get you one. Well, it's at its very best. And here we are. I don't know whether... Look at that, that that's, another, that's, another, that's another big rose there. That's got a nice fragrance, hasn't it? Beautifully fragrant, yeah. Very much, Look very rosy. Classic tea that. rose. It's going in the shade as well. Yeah. Look at that. Red perfume de Provence. We've got to see sweet perfume de Provence as well at yeah, some point because we'll I've, I've seen I've seen them already down there, but we'll have to have a, a walk past those and I'll, I'll get them on film. But lovely. Yeah, that's it. Lovely. Look at this. Look at this. Um, rose garden just breathtaking you can imagine how much heaven i'm in right now in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna do an introduction at this point i think now peter the gentleman over there that you see on the left he is the owner of this this rose nursery and um i've met him maybe three four maybe five times already and looking at his website some months ago and then coming here to to this rose nursery, I did suspect there was a bit of a gap between what I was seeing on his website and um, what I was seeing with my own eyes in his rose nursery. And uh, I said to him on a previous occasion, you know, did he do much trade through his website, through the internet? And he, um, he said, and he, his response and how he said it, he said, yeah, we, we, we do. Um, but most of what we get through the internet, people, they they contact us and many people, they'll ask us, have you got a rose for sale called Darren? Because it's my uncle and it's his birthday coming up. And the manner in which he said it for a rosarian, someone who's passionate about selling these roses, you can imagine the disappointment. So when it comes to East Cross rosaries, that is the best way that I can articulate who you are going to be dealing with. You are dealing with someone, it's not a garden centre, it's a rose nursery. And look at these, look yeah, at these man. roses, look at what, all what of them. them. Come on then, do you think you know what that is? I'm going to guesstimate this is Chandos Beauty. That is the great famous Chandos Beauty. Yes. Looking lovely. <laughs> and, and without any black spot. How are you not getting black spot on these? On these roses, I can I can honestly tell you these have had no sprays this year. How that is a miracle because my garden, many of the roses, most of the roses that are usually bulletproof, they have um they have had a fair amount of black spot this this year. Well, we've got a, there is a little bit of mildew, but this is this is real mildew weather when you have these 
high humidity and dewy mornings, but mildew is the least problematic of any of the rose diseases. So yeah. we don't really tend to do much to them in the field. Yeah. We tend to let them just fight it out and let's see what does well. It's all part of our styling to, to get this point. Sure. That's a, you, I know you like your perfume series. That's that's white perfume de Provence over there. Okay. Yeah, I saw that on a on another uh, previous visit. That one's another fragrant rose, a lovely white. It's almost yellowy green in the centre, isn't it? It is, it is. You so see there. Yeah, see, see just there. And I do like that. A white rose with just a, a yellowy sort of centre makes it just that little bit different. And I know this rose has got a very strong fragrance. It's a beauty. It's not the it's not the, the biggest tea rose, is it? It's quite compact. You look at Chandos, it's probably... Yeah another foot and a half tall but it's it's very handsome i find it does better you know um just in later you know from july onwards the first flowering i think because it's french it probably just likes it a bit hotter yeah but lovely. isn't that something it is lovely lovely so they've got three of the provence sort of varieties red white and sweet and right Oh, and stripes. Yeah. Oh. Are you still filming? I am, yeah, I'm yeah. rolling. Right, well, Justin was asking me about my favourite rose, and I said it changes three or four times a week, but I like this rose. This is called Marc Chargal. And Marc it's, Chargal? Yeah, it's one of the painter series from Delbar, yep. which is another French breeder. Um, but look at that, it's... I think it's just absolutely magic. It's got really nice leaf. Lovely, lovely. Always looks well. That's it, that's it probably at its best. Look at that. It has a nice fragrance. Strong, upright growth. Yep. Really quite large flowers. Look, I've got big hands and that is three or four inches across, yes, perhaps four yeah, or five yeah. inches across when it's fully open. Well, look at that one, it's even bigger. And that's it, slightly aging there, but it, you know what my father used to say, when you choose a plant, make sure it dies nicely. <laughs> and I, what he means is when the flower's going over, because I think everyone's seen those old varieties of roses that go mushy and horrible. And, yeah. But these just fade away. But that's quite beautiful colors, isn't it? So it is very nice, very nice. And this is your, you, you would say this is your favorite? It's up there. It's, it's up, up there. there. There are a couple we're going to come to in a minute that I think look very exciting over here. Okay. This is a this is a rose I've heard much about, and it's a rose called Coca Loca. Is that right, Peter? Coco Loco. Coco Loco. It is the most unusual colour, but look how look how well it's flowering down here. Look, it is just packed packed with flowers, and it's it's almost like a the colour I would describe as a sort of what is it a a chocolatey sort of skinny, caramel. Skinny latte. Skinny latte, I think that's it. Let me just... Or a mocha. Look at that. Look at that there. If you're looking for something unusual in your garden in terms of colour and something that flowers very well, <laughs> it's fragrant it as well. It is fragrant. That's it a little bit more open. Yeah. Stamens in the middle. Coco Loco. Coco Loco, yeah. That's American. And you've got several American yes, roses in your... But this one's this one's lovely, Coca Loca, and it's flowering. It's flowering very well. Here we have another rose. It, it's not in flower too much at the moment, but it looks like it will flower well. And it's a rose called Glorious Parfumer. That's right. Yeah, Glorious Parfumer. And um, it is really fragrant. That's got a beautiful, really deep perfume, hasn't it? It's really fragrant. Look, I mean, look at that there. Look at that. And I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to say that this could be my favourite of really the day. Like it's, it's, I, re I really like it, yeah. I really like it. And I'm not a big fan of white roses, but... Would you say that's white, though? Obviously? So far, so far, it's got like a creamy sort of yeah. centre to it. And that fragrance is something that I really like. It's amazing, isn't it? And look how tall Powerful. it is. Powerful. Yes, look. I reckon that's 
It's got to be five, five feet. Foot. Yeah, it's got to be five foot. So if you if you want a small rose in a pot next to your patio, you wouldn't choose this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. But so far, so far, that is a really that is a really lovely flower. Very nice. It's just a shame it's not amazing leaf on it, isn't it? But look how look how tall all of these are. Look how tall all of these are. They're huge. They're all five foot, Peter. They are, aren't they? And these will be on sale next year? They'll be on sale, yes, yes, they'll be on sale next year. Look at that. It's not in flower, unfortunately, but I've showed you the, the few flowers that are there as best I can, and that was a, a particularly powerful, powerful fragrance, but we'll see if there's, there's another. And here's a lovely, a lovely delicate yellow. It's called Avec Amour. Good size to it, and look at that, if you, if you are after a yellow, the light, the sun is round the wrong side, unfortunately, but that is, that is divine. And there's another one just there. But that is, that is lovely. It's a very, very nice, nice yellow, isn't it? It is, it is a nice yellow. A lovely pale, it's got like pale a, lemony yellow, isn't it? Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. It starts off darker. And then as the flowers go over, it does lighten like many of the yellow roses. But that, I mean, look at that. And there's a couple look of good ones here too. They've all got that similar sort of swirl when they, when they open. That's a classic sort of T whirl yeah. shape. Look, this is a beauty, look at that. Look at that. They've all got this lovely, consistent sort of manner in which they in which they unfold here with this with this pattern here look lovely lovely but i wanted to talk about this rose here and i was shocked when peter told me that this was delightful parfumer now delightful parfumer is a rose that i have in my garden and it is a rose that i've struggled with there's one in my mum's garden as well that isn't doing particularly well but look how upright these flowers are I am not seeing a single droopy one now the reason why this excites me is because it has a gorgeous flower and a gorgeous fragrance please just cut one here Let's yeah look. look at that look at it look how many it petals is, that's got <laughs> it is absolutely divine the reason why I I even said on my channel a little while ago I was probably gonna dig mine up in its second full summer and it saw some of the previous summer it hasn't done much for me and the, the flowers they were all drooping but you look down this entire row here not a single one drooping and I would even I would go as far as to say these were these were upright yes they are aren't they? they're strong I mean it's interesting look because we've got singles here yeah this will be their second, second flower, flower yeah because yeah. we've cut them down once mind you there's a good one there yeah, we cut them down usually twice in the season to because if we cut them down, what it does is they produce more shoots. Yeah, yeah. So our customers get a nicer plant. Yeah. So this will be due for cutting off this week again. So we, so we're going to cut all these beautiful flowers off. But you know, that is quite something, isn't it? It is a beautiful. Seems to have quite a soft petal, though. What do you think? It, it has got a soft petal. It has got a soft petal. Was it okay in the in the rain? It, it, it's, it didn't do bad in the rain. It didn't do bad in the rain. I wouldn't say it was as good as, say, Summer Romance uh, or Bliss Parfumer, you know, one of these sort of roses. But mine was just very saggy. Mm. Literally, not just pointing horizontal, it was pointing, Gone. you know, all the way down to the ground. Mm. But that, maybe my delightful Parfumer is going to have a... It's going to have a second, third It's, it's going to have next year, oh. I think, after seeing yours. Well, it's funny you talking about Bliss then, Bliss Parfumer. It's coming up. So we'll okay. have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Well, we're only about 20 or 30 paces up from that um, last one you liked, the uh, delightful parfum. Delightful parfum. And here we are at Bliss Parfumer. Look at that. Now then, that is a lovely flower, isn't it? It is. It is one of my, it is one of my favourites. Bird. Look at that one there. Look it's at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? And look at this leaf. It's a really, really nice leaf, isn't it? Lovely colour green, large, soft. 
I mean, it almost, you know, it's, <laughs> it's almost unbelievable, isn't it? Well, I, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. You know that Bliss Parfume, a lovely viewer, is one of my favourite roses. And to see these all here... Right, I was just, I was just over on that side, and, and this row of roses, it, it got my attention, and I asked Peter what rose this one was, and he told me it is Pacific Blue. Now, this is a rose that I almost bought uh, in a, on a previous visit. It looks absolutely fantastic, and I know one of the um, viewers of my channel bought this recently. It has got the most fantastic fragrance. The lighting conditions isn't great, but it has got Look a fantastic, that. a fantastic fragrance. Let's, I'm not sure if it's better in the sun or, or not, but this is a beautiful, beautiful flower. That really is very, very nice. Very nice indeed. It's a Tantau, is it, Peter? It is, it's a German one, yes. It's got this, it's really healthy, it's strong, it's upright. It's an absolutely perfect, perfect plant, that is. And it's one of your, he just said to me earlier, it's one of his, one of his favourites. It's got to be up there. Look, there's a nice little cluster. Look. look, look at that. Look at that, look at that. The lighting condition is not, I'm looking at, at the phone screen and I'm looking at the actual flower and I'm, I'm not getting the light right, but this is a... She's beautiful, though, isn't she? She is absolutely divine. I nearly bought this one. I ended up going for Tallulah on the day. Which is another great rose. Tallulah. <laughs> Which is like another great really rose. But this thing. one, this one is um, is much more fragrant. That uh, is definitely premiership. It's premiership. It's premiership, it's premiership stuff. stuff. Look at it. And all of them here. Now, when I went to his sort of, where he sells his roses, there was only one there. And I ended up walking away from it. But... Um, one of the viewers has, I know, has bought that rose, so I know it's gone to a, a good home. Now, this is another rose that I've recently bought. It's a rose that's got several names. It's a rose that's called Delish in America. It's called the Anniversary Rose. It's called Line Renaud. And it's called Sweet Perfume de Provence. But this is a Tantal rose, is it, Peter? Uh, yes. No, no. Mayon. Mayon. Okay. And this is a a rose. Again, it's it's kind of stopped me in my tracks. When I was at um, another garden centre, I saw this for sale. There you are, look. And it's got the most beautiful perfume. Absolutely sensational. I agree, 100%. This is a rose that's... No matter where you are in the world, it always gets fantastic reviews. Like I say, it's called Delish in America. That's a bit too south side for me. Sweet Perfume de Provence. That isn't catchy, is it? It's not, it's not. <laughs> Sweet Perfume de Provence is a much better name. But this is a fantastic rose. This is a rose when I was at, at Peter Bill's, it, it stopped me and I had to track down where that fragrance was coming from. And I tracked it all the way back to, to this. And this is a rose I nearly bought there, but I didn't but I have since bought it, a fantastic rose. Very fragrant, very floracious. And a big, a big hitter. And look at it, there's an entire, look at that bird. entire row of them. Look, there's the bud there, look. Beautiful green leaf, look at that bird, absolute perfect spiral. I've got, I've got two of these now. I've got one for my mum's garden and one for, one for my garden. But this really is, and it's the fragrance it's the fragrance that um, I particularly like, but this is a rose that I've seen said many, many times. It's just like a, a flowering machine with its ability to to repeat. And that's one thing, you know, just so we haven't said yet, every rose we've uh, looked at today is a repeat flower. Yeah. So these will be flowering in your garden from early June till well, they might, you might even still get a few on Christmas Day. Whether you want that or not is another thing. But yeah. they'll certainly flower two or three times in the summer. Maybe three and a half times. Well, that is it. That's our 
a nice one to finish on, isn't it? It is, and I'm gonna, we're gonna finish, we're gonna do what I normally do, and um, I'm gonna finish on my favorite rose of the day, and I'm gonna tell you now, it's gonna come down to two roses, and the first rose is Pacific Blue, and the second rose, it could be the second rose, but we'll see on the next clip. Right, <laughs> in, a, in a field full of roses, in flower, there is a little irony that my favorite rose of the day is gonna come back to this one here. There's barely any flowers on this. But this is a glorious perfumer. And it is my favorite rose on the day. And it's, it's some, oh, it's, it's fragrance. That does it for, that does it for me. But my favorite rose on the day is regardless of what I say or what anyone else says, I do recommend you, you visit your local rose nursery and see for yourself. Make your own minds up as to what is your favorite rose on that particular on that particular day because when i walk around my garden now it can come as no surprise that my favorite roses are not something that i've got from the internet but the roses that i've chosen for myself and look at that look at that absolutely gorgeous if you get a chance look into this rose i'm gonna have another sniff divine divine fragrance just a slight pink and i'm not a big fan of white roses but that is absolutely divine right lovely viewer i hope you have a lovely day well if you made it to the end of the video then well done because that was a long video even by my standards but i wanted to add just a couple of things one i will leave a link to peter's website in the description below and the other thing is i wanted to point out that and it's something i tried to to do in the video as subtly as i could peter's website it does need a bit of work it does need a bit of work you know he is a guy he wears crocs and socks he is a rosarian and he is not a a software engineer but i have tried to to guide him in a direction that perhaps his website could be better reflective of the the collection of roses that he has and the quality of roses that he has and he has been working on it he's been working on it to improve it but i know that the roses that he has they will all be for sale come bare root season and also the spring of next year and hopefully his his website will be ready by then but at the moment he is, he is working to improve it. And I know there are some roses that you saw in this video. They don't currently appear on his website, but it's something, it just takes a bit of time. And I wanted to, to just be clear about that. You know, when someone says things take time, it's normally disappointment. But um, Peter's Rose Nursery, I think it is it's, it's the best I've seen the quality of the roses and the quality of the actual collection that he has is is fantastic so improvements improvements are going to happen i think and the other thing i wanted to say is um, and i think it's important as well i'm not getting anything from anyone for making these videos from any direction i'm literally just supporting a local business and a local business that I think happens to be a particularly fine one. So I wanted to, to just add, just add those things. Please do give his website some time, but he has got a, a fantastic collection. In fact, I'm gonna leave you, I'm gonna leave you with Shawnee because he's the, He's the star of the show, as always. He's facing the wrong way, so we're gonna to have to come around here. <laughs> there he is. Let's see if I can get a mad shot of him. <laughs> Say hello, Shawnee. Right, lovely viewer. I'm definitely going now. I hope you have a lovely day.